Good evening. If you're logging on and joining us, we're just going to give this another minute um, or so before we start. We see a lot of people in the waiting room getting in and logging on. So thank you for joining us for the Bayview Neighborhood Plan kickoff meeting. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. I'll turn it over very briefly to Tanya and then to the older woman to uh, kick us off. Sounds great. Thanks, Monica. Well, welcome everyone to the first community meeting for the Bayview Neighborhood Plan 2040. We're really excited um, for you to be here with us and be participating in the process. Um, and we just want to say right out the gate that we really appreciate your time and, and energy and excitement about this process. Um, with us this evening is Alderwoman Dimitrievich of the 14th District to welcome us and formally kick off the process. So with that, Alderman, all to you. All right, everybody hear me okay? Okay, well, good evening, everybody. Um, I just really wanna thank you for being here tonight. This has been a long time um, in the making and planning. You have to plan for the plan that you're gonna plan. Um, but I think one thing that's for sure as we um, come back out and get to see each other is that our neighborhood is at a crossroads and we, should and can, and this is the opportunity to do it, to get in the front seat and really be the architects uh, of our own neighborhood. Um, many times it's easy to say what we don't like or don't wanna see, and we should do that, but uh, I'm very interested and excited to be part of the conversation of what do we wanna see? Um, down to the streets, um, you know, the bike lanes, the transportation, the open spaces, the historic preservation and of course, things that we wanna see built. Um, there's so much detail. This is one of the best neighborhoods in Milwaukee. I'm so excited to be here. And um, you all are part of it. It's your voice that we're going to be putting together for a vision. Uh, I'm just excited to have our Department of City Development here that will lead us through this process. And I really do believe in the end that it will bring us all closer together. So thank you so much for participating and I can't wait to see what we come up with. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman. And thank you so much for your passion and dedication to the community and this really exciting planning process. So um, before we um, jump in, just very brief introductions. I'm Tanya Fonseca, the Long Range Planning Manager for the City of Milwaukee's Department of City Development. Um, and with me this evening is my colleague, Hi, I'm Monica Watts-Smith. I'm a uh, senior planner here at the Department of City Development, working with Tanya on this project. You will also have the opportunity to meet some of our other colleagues this evening. We'll be doing some breakout room discussions later on, so you'll get to meet some of them. So um, just kind of a quick agenda for the evening. We're going to go through the purpose of the area planning process the goals of the area planning process, um, our timeline for the process, the community engagement, um, some data, um, current data about the Bayview neighborhood. And then we're going to do the interactive um, exercise. It's called SOAR, standing for um, Strengths, uh, Opportunities, Aspirations, and Results. And that will be um, you know, in a smaller breakout room and then we'll go through some next steps. During the meeting, we do ask um, during the presentation that you please stay on mute. Um, it's up to you if you want your camera to be on or off during this um, meeting in general. Um, for this first part of the meeting, you know, feel free to just relax, eat dinner, move around, do what you need to do. Um, during the interactive portion, um, we, we do hope that you'll participate and feel comfortable unmuting yourself and enjoying, enjoying the discussion. And again, it's up to you if you want to uh, be on camera or not. So before we uh, dive into the presentation, um, let's get to know each other a little bit this evening through some polling questions that Monica will walk us through. We are actually going to skip over the polling questions for okay. now, um, but we hope to get to some of that during the breakout sessions. Um, Sounds good. Thanks, Monica. Okay. Um, well, thank you again, everyone, for participating. It's great to see so many people with us tonight. And 
Um, before we really dive in, just want to underline how important, you know, strong participation is in the process and that the process for this plan is really just as important as the plan itself. It'll make it that much stronger. Um, before we go forward with anything else, just to talk about the study area in general, um, generally it's bound by Bay Street on the north side um, and Beecher Street. Uh, South Chase Street and the Canadian Pacific Rail Line to the west, the Union Pacific Rail Line and Holt Avenue to the south, and Lake Michigan to the east. Um, again, generally, um, we're, we're already getting feedback, you know, kind of outside of these boundaries, and that is just fine. That's great. We are learning um, about what the, the Bayview neighborhood looks like to you um, and what those boundaries are. Um, just a quick note on the north end, the Harbor District Water and Land Use Plan um, was recently updated and does do some planning for some of those northern extents. So we won't be diving too deeply there, but we still welcome comments and feedback, absolutely. Um, so just to get to the next um, slide in terms of uh, where we are, um, the South Sea Side Area Plan is where Bayview Falls. It was last updated in 2008. Um, the city actually has 14 areas um, that we do area plans for that cover all 96 square miles of Milwaukee. Um, per state statute, these plans are updated every 10 years and our long range planning team at the city manages and updates those and does you know, ongoing implementation as well. Um, the comprehensive plan in general is holistic in nature and lays out a road map, road map for the um, next 20 years with the strong vision, goals, and short, medium, and longer, long term proactive recommendations that guide physical, social, economic development, and land use regulations. And each plan is customated, customized, excuse me, based on community needs. The plan itself will be used by all, all of us here tonight, um, various city departments, but also other agencies, organizations, and community members in implementation. It's all of our plan. Um, again, we really appreciate your time and willingness to participate and you'll learn more about that um, throughout the evening about how to stay engaged. So with that, um, Monica can take things from there. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go over a few of the draft study goals, um, and we really appreciate having your feedback um, on these. Um, one of the main purposes of the study is to engage the neighborhood in a discussion around different development scenarios for different areas in Bayview. For example, along Kinnikinick or Chase Avenue, this includes discussions about where new development and redevelopment is appropriate and what it should look like. So we can arrive at a little more consensus about um, what can sometimes be a controversial topic. We're also looking to identify um, and look at larger sites and envisioning the best use. For example, there's the Army Reserve site. This is a city owned site that's north of Beulah Brinton um, between Bay and Logan. We're looking at what the best uses are for this area. Um, this plan will explore ways to support local businesses in Bayview to make commercial corridors and areas attractive. Another very important topic is looking at different policies and strategies to provide housing options for a wide range of incomes and family types. This plan will also look at the public realm. And when we say public realm, we're talking about public land. So that's parks, open space, and it's also streets and how we uh, foster an attractive and sustainable neighborhood. Lastly, I'll also mention historic preservation. We want to explore and educate residents about different options for retaining the historic character of the neighborhood. Um, these are some of the, we've had an initial round of stakeholder interviews and conversations, and these are some of the things that have risen up to the, to the top of prior, people's priorities. Um, I want to delve a little um, into a little more detail about some of the questions that this planning effort is seeking to answer, as well as kind of our, our base understanding. Um, for housing needs, this is a really important topic. We're looking at what are the characteristics of the existing housing stock 
and what is the expected demand for housing based on um, different demographic trends. We're also looking at how we address various needs such as affordability, aging in place, or simply Hello, sorry there, I was muted for a moment. Um, please let me know if I need to um, go back um, on this slide. Uh, um, also Bayview is a very walkable and bikeable neighborhood, but there's always room for improvement. So we'll be taking a look, we'll be taking a look at that. Um, we know that local business is a large part of Bayview's identity. It's a huge draw from around the metro area, many of the restaurants. The businesses currently coordinate with each other in an informal, organic way. This study um, will look at whether there's a desire or a need for a little more structure there. Um, looking, we'll be, this study will be looking at vacant and underutilized sites. As I mentioned, the Army Reserve site. Um, the previous study that we did in 2008 had a recommendation for multifamily and senior housing close to a feature um, Kenosha Racine Milwaukee commuter uh, train line that was planned. Uh, this plan will re-examine this site. We'll also look at other sites that might be susceptible to change. Looking at development and aesthetics, that's another important um, a topic that the plan will address, including where new development is preferred, how that development or redevelopment should look, and just as importantly, like what are there areas of the neighborhood where the historic character should be preserved and how that should be um, accomplished. Within all of these topics, the, um, the issues of equity and sustainability are gonna be interwoven. So that'll be part of, part of everything. In terms of the timeline, um, the timeline for this study is approximately a year. That's a fairly ambitious schedule for this type of study, but our intent is to conclude it um, around this time next year. We're at the very beginning of the, we're in phase one, um, which is really all about defining community goals, identifying those opportunities. We'll move on. Um, phase two is a lot of data gathering, really kind of looking at what's on the ground, getting more community feedback. I think the important thing to note here is that for each milestone, each major um, step in the process, there'll always be a public meeting, a point where we check in with the community to make sure we're to make sure we're on track. Then speaking of community engagement. Um, just a list here are the various ways that we propose to engage. There'll be at least four community-wide um, meetings. We're starting um, in the virtual format, um, just a note about COVID and meetings. Um, if the past year and a half has taught us anything, it's that it's, uh, it's hard to predict anything. We do hope to have some in-person events. But for now, we're playing it safe and doing it virtual. And there's also, there's some upsides too to doing things virtually. Um, there's a plan advisory group. Um, and this advisory group, it's made up of representatives from different city departments, other governmental agencies, advocacy groups. They're often our partners in implementation. So we're involving them from the very beginning so that our key partners um, that can help us implement some of these recommendations in the future are involved and on board um, from the very from the very start. There'll be a series of focus groups too um, on a variety of different different stakeholders with you know business owners, residents, perhaps with senior citizens in particular, developers, and any. Um, and we'll keep an open mind about like any other any other groups that um, are um, that we want to engage more specifically in depth outside of the public meetings. We're interviewing people one on one. There'll also be a des some design charrettes, and that's really where we're looking to um, engage the community, like provide very um, to provide visualizations about what type of development is desirable. Um, 
social pinpoint. I'll show an example of that um, um, in just a moment. Um, but we are using an online platform, which some of you may have already tried out to really kind of bolster our online presence, um, especially while things, a lot of things are virtual. We've attended some neighborhood events. Uh, we were at the South Shore Farmers Market a couple weeks ago, and we hope to do future ones as well. Um, and last but not least, we've been coordinating with the Bayview Neighborhood Association um, to really help um, to help with the outreach. So we really appreciate their partnership in this. As I mentioned, Social Pinpoint is it's an online engagement uh, um, for, um, forum. It's great, again, to do things virtual during COVID, but another benefit is that I know sometimes attending meetings can be very difficult. So while we, you know, just with busy schedules, um, so we, the benefit of this is that someone can log in online and just provide feedback um, whenever it's convenient for them. This is just a snapshot of a mapping exercise that's on there currently. Hopefully some of you have been able to check it out already. But we're getting some great feedback where people can post what they love about their neighborhood, things that need improvement, questions, suggestions. Um, there's, and you can see what other people are saying too. Um, so check it out. There's some, we are already receiving some fantastic, um, fantastic feedback. And this will be up for a while so people can continue to add to it. Um, for urban design, um, we are hiring a consultant, as I mentioned, providing visualizations and different renderings about different development scenarios, about you know, what's the appropriate building heights, building size, density, style, um, all those different factors. We'll be creating images so people really know exactly what we're talking about. Um, so we're in the process of hiring that, that consultant. Um, and we hope to do, we'll have a number of design charrettes around that. And just, you know, for example, we're just getting started with this study, but I, some of the things that we've heard are that Kinnikinick, it's the main street of the community, or perhaps there's ways that it could be improved. You know, where does the development belong, you know, along that corridor? Are there specific places that are more appropriate or less appropriate? Um, the Army Reserve site, which we mentioned a couple of times. And then Chase Avenue, it's a very auto-oriented corridor um, with a lot of parking lots towards the front. There's, I'm, there's, I'm sure there's ways to improve upon it. So we look forward to um, exploring those possibilities. Just a little bit of a data snapshot. We'll be getting into more data heavy stuff probably at the second meeting, but just to you know, give an idea about um, Bayview from a numbers perspective. Overall, Bayview is a very middle income neighborhood, but that said, about one in five households earns less than $35,000. Um, the median age in Bayview is slightly older, and on a perhaps related note, the average household size is also slightly smaller when you compare it to the rest of the city of Milwaukee and to the um, to its um, suburban neighbors. Bayview is highly educated with many professional workers. Um, nearly 50% of adult residents have a bachelor or graduate degree and two thirds um, of residents are considered white collar professionals. There is a growing percentage of the population that identifies as Latino um, with a similar percentage of the, as the city of Milwaukee as a whole around, around 20%. Housing, another a very important topic um, that I'm sure everyone is interested in exploring more. The median listing price currently is about um, $274,000 with a, a wide range from $172,000 to um, over $700,000. Home prices and assessments have been going up. It's a highly competitive market. And this all leads to concerns about affordability and displacement. So this plan will be providing additional housing analysis. So that is kind of a, a brief rundown of kind of the, you know, what this study is about and what we're hoping to accomplish. Um, 
For the rest of the meeting, we wanna hear from you. This is a relatively large group. I think we had 130 people register for the meeting. Um, so we're gonna break up into five different virtual breakout rooms to do what we call a SOAR exercise, S-O-A-R. It's similar if you ever done a SWOT exercise for a strategic planning, um, uh, strategic planning exercise, it's kind of a similar concept. But um, so it looks at strengths. So you'll be in a room um, with other um, with other fellow residents. Um, there'll be a member of the planning team to help facilitate this discussion. And every room is going to be the same, covering the same information. Um, so we'll be looking at strengths, you know, what are the neighborhood assets? What do you like, you know, what do you like most about the neighborhood? What are you most proud of um, when you think of Bayview? Also opportunities, um, you know, where's the room for improvement? Um, aspirations, kind of what's your ideal neighborhood? Um, this plan goes out to 2040. So this is the time to think big. You know, what do you want Bayview to look like by 2040? 